All right, what's up, y'all? It's Thundercat here again. Um, this will probably be a little short one. I've got so many things that I'm in the process of making videos on, uh, but a couple things popped up today uh, while I was having my uh, delicious New Orleans blend coffee, as usual, and you know, poking around the internet, seeing if anything really sparked my attention. Uh, but I did find a couple of things here. Uh, everybody is all up in arms over uh, this Betsy DeVos and what's going on with our possible uh, education reform plans. That's um, some, I think, well, you know, as usual on any subject, people are going to start losing their damn minds. Um, but uh, the first thing I want to get to is this. <laughs> <laughs> I started looking at a couple of uh, videos that some of the other YouTuber guys have done over this uh, Elizabeth Warren getting silenced thing. And I stumbled across this one. And, uh, man, I, I've, I found something. And you guys check this out. Hang on. Let me get. Ah, it's good coffee. All right. So let's uh, let's get over here to it. And uh, we'll hide you. So uh, this is, you know, the Elizabeth Warren starts reading this. I'll just. Uh, Congressman just... who has exhibited so much hostility to the enforcement of those laws. The senator is reminded that it is a violation of Rule 19 of the standing rules of the Senate to impute to another senator or senators any conduct or motive unworthy. Okay, so he's reading that there, that particular point. And she she is violating a, a, a rule for their hearings. But check it out. I'll, I'll drop this video in the uh, description box. When this cat's talking, you can hear a woman somewhere. I don't know how the audio is coming through or where it's coming from. Or how it got into the mix, but there is somebody um, feeding him these lines. You can hear it. Or becoming a senator. Uh, Mr. President, I don't think I quite understand. I'm reading a letter from Coretta Scott King to the Judiciary Committee from 1986 that was admitted. Well, wow, chair comes. I'm simply reading what Elizabeth she Warren's full of shit too, and batshit crazy. To be a federal court judgment and what it would mean in history for her. This is a reminder, not necessarily what you just shared. However, you stated that that a sitting senator is a disgrace to the Department of Justice. No, you can't do that. Uh, I think that may have been senator. And, and, and this, although I would be. Can you hear it in the background? Here it comes. Words. Let me crank it. The rule applies to, to impute conduct or motive through any form or voice to a sitting state. Form of words includes quotes, articles, or other materials. So, quoting Senator Kennedy, calling. Now, I'm sure this is a normal a, thing, uh, but. Uh, 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 nominee Sessions <laughs> a disgrace is a violation of Senate rules. It was certainly not. It just goes to show how much this whole thing is. A, it's a. It's a so shit show. It's a dog and pony and show. And the senator is warned. So can I ask a question in the opinion of the chair? Now, I don't I know if somebody's feeding her lines. Maybe that's why she's so going way outside the, the box here. Is the of the chair that under the rules of the Senate, I am not allowed to accurately describe public views of Senator Sessions? No, you're not. Not in hearing. Senator Sessions. Quote public statements of Senator Sessions. No. You hear the, the lines? Chair has not made a ruling as respect to the senator's comments. Where's that coming from? The senator is following process and tradition. By reminding the senator of Massachusetts of the rule. Oh, I'm I'm asking for what this rule means in this context. So can I continue? Yeah. So you know, somebody's feeding him the lines, and she just she won't back down. She's doing everything she did, and. This is why the the left and these regressives, uh, they they 
they look fucking crazy uh, because they're going so far out on a limb. They're willing to break rules of congressional hearings uh, and so forth to push their initiative. And the initiative is always fuck Trump, fuck anybody that's going to be on his cabinet, fuck his voters, fuck his supporters. I mean, that's, I mean, we just got to be clear here. This is what's going on. So <laughs> it just goes on and on. And, you know, she's finally told to sit down and you're done. That's great. So I'll drop that video in the uh, description box. So here's the other thing. Uh, Betsy DeVos, you know, everybody's up in arms with her. They had a huge hearing. The vote was split. Uh, Pence. Uh decided the vote so she gets in now let's turn back to the contentious confirmation pbs does actually an honest reporting on it like the news used to be razor thin tonight we look at how it went down what the vote where it wasn't pushing some kind of agenda and the limits of her power it's the focus for our weekly education segment making the grade lisa desjardins gets us started on this vote the yeas are 50 so yeah the nays are 50. the senate being equally divided the vice president votes in the affirmative and the nomination is confirmed. <gasps> How dare he? Uh, that's a constitutional rule, by the way. It's it's cool. That's how it works. It marked the first time a vice president presiding over the Senate has broken a tie. Uh, that, by the way, is almost the extent of Pence's power as a of Betsy DeVos vice president. Secretary of Education. And it came after He's a vote splitter. straight hours of debate. When Democrats held a rare overnight speech of the boss. <laughs> but the primary doubt came from two Republicans. Susan Collins of Maine. Oh, no surprise there that the hardcore the Republicans are going to be against no. anything that Democrats Trump does. Like now, I'm not saying DeFoss, I was in yes, huge support of her, but, you know, she's, she's who Trump wanted. A complete lack of knowledge. She's who Trump wanted, and now we got to give her a chance. And to be completely clear, her job is to follow forth with Trump's plan, not her personal idea. Maybe she can implement some of those if, if Trump says, yeah, that's cool, go with it. But her job is to do what Trump wants her to do. And if she doesn't, she will probably be removed. I mean, it's that, that simple. So everybody getting all up in arms here. I mean, let's settle down. Everybody needs to just settle down. As to what the Department of Education actually does. But a number of Republicans, like Tennessee's Lamar Alexander, defended DeVos. She's led the most effective public school reform movement over the last 30 years. And I urge you to give the new Republican president the opportunity to choose his own... Yeah, see, that's the other thing is DeVos is, is not completely... Uh, devoid of any public uh, education experience. I mean, she's she's been part of reforming and all this. She's done a lot of this stuff. And I'm not saying it's the best thing ever, but she's not a complete rube when it comes to this. Education secretary. DeVos is known as a school choice activist. Okay. Supports for profit charters. Okay, that, okay, uh, for profit charter schools. Uh, the for-profit part is the part that gets me just a little bit, but I am in total support of funding charter schools. Um, because, uh, you know, I see my daughter goes to a charter school, and I don't know, uh, I'll brag a little bit, but she's going to go to a place called Harvard. Um, and she's not an exception. A lot of the kids that go to her, almost all of the kids are exceptional kids. They're getting a great education and they enjoy doing it. Now, because the charter school can set up their education uh, program the way that they choose to. And it's really cool. You know, it's, it's like a... It's like a kind of a hippie commune when you go over there. And it's a lot of fun. They, their theater program is great. Uh, and the kids enjoy it. They enjoy going to school. So, you know, I can't say that I enjoyed a lot of my uh, public schooling experience. There was some of it that I enjoyed a, a lot, like uh, marching band and sports and stuff like that. Um, which probably wouldn't get the same marching band experience at a charter school just because of 
the schools are so much smaller, but the benefits on the other side are, are huge. Schools and wants public funds to be used as vouchers for private schools. Why not? She's Why not? Okay, that doesn't seem like an incredibly terrible idea to me. If public funds can send a kid to have their choice of what they would like to do to go to the school, especially high school. By that point, a kid can decide, hey, this public school thing's not for me. Maybe I want to try something else. We're spending the money on these kids to go anyway. And it's done, for those of you that don't understand how the education system works, if your kid shows up absent, especially here in Texas, the funding for these public schools goes by attendance. If your kid doesn't show up, that school loses money for that day. So the funding is directly related to the kids showing up to school. So if that kid doesn't go, it's not like we're paying for kids that aren't going to public school or we're paying twice. I mean, this is, this is sort of a complicated thing, but it doesn't have to be, it's not the devil of what they're, what she's also proposing. Also a billionaire who, along with her family, has donated heavily to Republicans. Okay, so that right there is bullshit. Who cares? Um, who gives a fuck how much money she has? Her, as long as she does her job, I don't care. That billionaire Republican donor things to her family or from her family, it's horseshit. And when Bernie Sanders went after her about it, he just uh, once again Sanders makes himself look like a fucking asshole. It's too much. You've got too much money. We've got to split it up. Ah. In the end, she survived the toughest fight for any Trump nominee yet. And Vice President Pence swore her in late today. And Lisa joins me now. And Lisa, out of all... Okay, so here's my thing about the people fighting Trump's nominees. All they're doing is wasting time and more government money by resisting. I mean, if they found something huge on somebody... Uh, you know, connections to pedophile ring, uh, drug charges, something, something along that lines. Then, yeah, we gotta, we gotta have some uh, serious consideration put forth on that particular nominee. But other than that, put them in. Let let's see if they can do their job. If they're gonna do it. They're gonna make changes. And that being said, nobody's gonna like everything that anybody does so sitting around and bitching about it constantly is not going to help especially if you're doing it on social media like <laughs> uh, it's a fart and a stiff breeze complaining all you're going to do is get your buddies on facebook to either cheerlead for you or they're going to argue against you come on now of these uh, nominees, this one ended up giving the Trump administration the most trouble. What happened? Well, I think that there was an overwhelming response from America. Part of that we know was individual voters following Betsy DeVos's hearings who called their senators. But let's not kid ourselves. There was also a huge organizational push, largely by teachers unions. I talked to mm. the National Education Association. They said they directed yeah. 1.1 million emails towards senators, and then also the American Federation of Teachers, 2,000 actions from them. These were unions making a huge push. They came close, Saudi, but in the end, this is a-, a lot of teachers aren't in the union. Also a tale of unions. They still have influence. They can still mobilize. But they don't have decisive influence anymore. They lost. Right. Close, but no cigar. Yeah. The thing is that the out. <laughs> okay. So PBS is going to push a little bit of an agenda here. They're biased. Um, but anyway, the, this, this whole thing, we could go on and on. This is not really what I wanted to hit on today. Um, but I, I had to show a little, little bit of this. So let's let everybody calm down. DeVos got in. Let's see if she can carry through with Trump's plan. And, uh, you know, I, I think I voiced my position. I, I don't think um, some of her ideas are completely terrible. I'm not sure that she's the person. Um, maybe she'll fuck up real bad and we got to do something else. But we have to be fair and give her a chance. 
And the, my favorite thing is she's a Democrat. And it was the whole fuck Trump narrative that they keep going with and fuck anybody on his, uh, on his cabinet or that anybody that he nominates have to destroy them, exterminate. <laughs> so they, they even go after their own. It's like a uh, tigers eating their young, you know, <laughs> They don't care as long as they can force that narrative that anybody that Trump has is terrible. Oh, boy. So, um, yeah, you know, that, that kind of wraps that up. It's it's sort of a, a behind-the-door issue. We'll see what happens here. Anyway, for now, Thundercat, we'll see you next time.